know someone that's struggling in this market or just feels like it could be another 2006, 7, 8 again, you are going to love this interview, especially when you hear how this couple went from zero to 500 transactions. Let me say it to you again, zero to 500 transactions, and they're just getting started. So give them context. How many transactions will you do this year and what's the team look like so people have context before we go to the early days? Sure. Total team, we've got 36 people on the team. Okay. We'll close uh, right over 500 units at $210 million. Congratulations. Thanks. Right? That's a big business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, a lot of and, fun. And for the person listening, we're going to unpack how they got there because this was done really just in the last like two and a half years. Right before COVID. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's remarkable. So take yeah. us back to 2006. I'm going to go into real estate. I want to be near family. I've got my son, right? He must have been at that time, what? Three. Two, yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. right? So, so you know, that's perfect time to go into real estate. That's right. 2007 hits, global mortgage meltdown. It was all your fault, Nate, it by the was. way. It was. <laughs> yes. What did you do your first year? Seven deals. That's actually really good. Yeah. yeah. Were they... REO, were they short sale? Were they the la first time buyers? Yeah, I strictly, um, when I got into real estate, all I did was open houses literally every single day yeah. from 12 until five o'clock. Would you recommend that to people today? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Um, you can build your database. You build relationships with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great way to collect information from yes. people. Yes. Yes. Nate, can, you were going to say? Yeah. You know, like that is that is how Jamie started was open houses. Everybody in our brokerage thought mm -hmm. she was crazy yeah. because she was like, I have to make money. So she was going and holding open houses during the day. Yep. She We still have the sign on one of our doors. She had a little, you know, like, I'll be back at with a, a time thing on it and she would put that on the go have lunch or you know go do something real quick and come back to the open house so she was holding open houses in the middle of the week yeah and what you found out was that the people that were coming to those open houses weren't kicking as many tires right. as the people were coming right. in on weekends and you yes. built and you were able to capitalize on that so yeah. it was pretty awesome even i as her husband and i wasn't in with her like in the business at that time was like you're just gonna go sit at a house all day yeah. And she's like, yeah. And she'd yeah. come home and she'd have, she'd have a contact. You yeah. Know? And yeah. It only takes one. That's right. right. Yep, that's and, exactly Andy C it. and Stephanie, you know, younger who are like great, you know, friends of ours. They mm -hmm. also, I mean, they do 400 and 600 open houses a year and they're right. like, yep. you only need one great one. If you get one great one every day and you do it 200 times, right. you're going to win. You're yeah. going to win. Yeah. So, so looking back, right. what did you do in 2007? That like that, that was the year you did seven transactions. Yeah. Yep. What'd you do in eight? Because uh, eight got really mucky. Well, it's it's kind of funny because I don't think I'm a dumb person. <laughs> Let me preface that. I concur. <laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't pay I attention brilliant. to the world. I wasn't yeah. listening to everything. Interesting. And so for me, I just, my whole philosophy has always been keep my head down and the money will come. And yeah. so during those years, when I look back, I just realized I never really looked at the news or listened to anybody. Yeah. And a lot of the senior agents that were in the office were all complaining and talking negatively, but I just kept focus and head down. And for me, every year I seemed to double what I was doing the year before. Mm -hmm. um, but part of it now, knowing what I know now, is I didn't let that affect my mindset. Yes. And I think that was a huge thing back then that contributed to our success. Oh, absolutely. Do you think that there was something about, you know, moving back home, starting over... I'm, you know, I'm assuming you weren't like, well, since we are sitting on several million dollars in savings, right. let's move back to Texas and right. start over, right? Yeah. You, you got a young son. You guys, we were, were young. You know, yeah, you're coming out of the mortgage business, which yeah. was an absolute disaster at that time. That's right. Was your back against the wall? Did you have to do it, or was it cushy for you? No, we we had to, and it's a really funny story that I share um, that's probably pertinent today. Oh. But we were really broke. I thought it was going to be an easy job, like probably a lot of people do. Sure. He had the mortgage industry crash, basically. And um, I'll never forget, I was walking into the office and the phone rings. You know, the biggest thing in real estate is to answer your phone. Yes. Right? And so I answered the phone and the lady said, hey, you, you came by one of our model homes. You're the grand prize winner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And um, I said, what I win? She said, $6,000 in gas. And I was like, what? And she said, yes, $6,000. So what we won were $6,000 in gas cards. That's awesome. Which for us, when we were super broke at the time, was like, I don't know, just the cherry on top. That's like a massive game changer. It was, it was oh, huge Especially for, for a real estate agent. Yeah. It was huge. It was insane. Um, but the, the lesson of the whole story yeah. was, as she said, I'm really glad you enter your phone. 
And I said, why? And she goes, you're the fourth person that I called. Oh, it's like Google local services ads. Right. Exactly <laughs> you're right. You're the fourth person. Yes. Well, why did you choose us? Because you answered the damn phone. phone. Exactly. Right. We'd like to buy a house and no one's yeah. responding. Yes, right? exactly. That's the same thing. That, you know, I can't wait to introduce you guys to my friend, Michael Polzler, who has like 35,000 agents in Europe. And he's like, answer the phone. Answer the phone. Because in Europe, it's just it's just not as easy, right, mm -hmm. as it is in the U.S. I mean, people still don't answer the phone in the U.S. It'd be mm -hmm. nice if they did, but in Europe, they really don't answer the phone. If you're from Europe, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you go from seven to what? 14 14, 15. Ish? Yep. Okay. And then, and you, so in the beginning it was open houses. Did you do anything differently from a marketing and lead generation standpoint that reflecting back, maybe someone listening right now and be like, okay, what should you do in year two to double? Yeah. So in year two to double, I had all that my database from all the open house people. And that's all I did was work my database. Interesting. Co constantly calling, constantly emailing. Mm -hmm. I did also kind of lighten up a little bit on open houses, Yeah. but I still did them consistently yeah. every weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was in the time where, you know, like you were literally on your phone making phone calls. You weren't texting like we didn't yeah. text back yeah, then, right. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I didn't think the texting thing was really going to take off yeah. at the time. And <laughs> um, but you were like constantly making calls like and and you would go into the office at like into our home office at night and and make calls and and you constantly picked up the phone yeah that was your and life sometimes we talk about real estate sometimes we wouldn't sure but just keep those connections going I, you know we talk about it all the time you know david caldwell and i were just texting it's like the whole game is whoever has the most conversations that's no, right it's so true though right so so what i hear is in year two you know you had some transactions under your belt Right. You realize there might be a, a better use of your time, making more phone calls, showing more houses, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Did you add any other lead generation in year two? Open houses being the first and then yeah. what else? I, I think one of the, the big game changes for Jamie and and it shows like where she is now, it that was like the the seed to it was was Relo in, oh. in your approach oh. to Relo. So I think that's worth sharing that story. Um very short story, um, but I was sitting in the office. I'll never forget all mm -hmm. these, you know, seasoned agents walk over and they're like, Jamie, we're all about to leave. They're about to raise the referral fee for mm -hmm. relocation. Yeah. So they're going from 25%, I think, to 32.5. Yeah. And I kind of look at the lady and uh, she's like, come with us. We're going to another brokerage. And I and said- And you weren't on Relo. I wasn't on Relo yet, but I looked at her and I probably should have kept this to myself, but I said it out loud and I said- Actually, what I'm going to go do is ask the manager for all your Relo business. And they all left, and I became the Relo person for the office. In chaos, there is opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was a really, that was an astute move on your part. Yeah. Yes. And even, you know, back then, like paying 32% or, you know, like 25% has been the standard in the industry forever. Right. Relo is now like 42%. 40, yeah, 48 right? actually yeah. now. When 48. 48. Yeah, 48. Yeah. So, so how many transactions came from Relo? At that moment, probably about 75% of them. Wow. But it, I had a different perspective on them because, you, yes, you are doing a relo fee. Yes, mm -hmm. you're doing yes. all those reports. Well, it's like Zillow Flex or RDC right. or Op City yeah. or, or an agent agent referral. Like it is what it is. Yeah. yeah but my goal was a sign in the yard, yep. which created more opportunities there for buyers and people calling me. So my name and branding kind of got out from that point. Yes. And that was that was kind of my whole outlook on it. Still to this day, I do relo. Mm -hmm. I I embrace it because I just know for me, my goal right. is not that transaction. It's all the transactions I'm getting from it. How many transactions built yeah. off of yeah. it? Yeah. And, and, and you would even back then, you would, you know, people would wave your flag and talk about how awesome you were you were as an agent and you would be like, that's great. Do you know anybody that needs my service? Like you literally right. were saying that before, yeah. right. before coaching, like, yeah. it was yes. like it was who, great. who do you know that needs me? Yeah. And so the referral business from the Relo, like it was, it, it was just, and it, it just showed how open-minded you were to it. When a lot of agents are like, I'm not giving up my split, you right. know, and it's like, right. right. And back then, I bet you weren't on like the more traditional splits that we see today across mm -hmm. the U.S. Correct. and exactly. Canada, the, you know, 85, yeah. 88, 90, right. right? Back then, I'm guessing you were on like 60, 55, and 55, then they're 60, taking, yeah. right? Then yeah. they're taking yeah. 32.5 yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. but. It wasn't about that deal. Janelle Garrison was on the podcast uh, about a month and a half ago, said the same thing in the early days of her career. I don't know if it actually made the show, but she said, I took Relo because I would take this client out. I'd go sell them a house. They were relocating in. They work for, you know, name the company. 
but I knew they were going to leave in two years. Right. So exactly. I was going to get the listing on the other side yeah. Yeah. and I was going to get any one of their other friends that they knew. I'd introduce them to people inside the community. I'd get them like really connected. And she's like, that's just a good thing to do in general. It's the same reason why she says I take first time buyers out today. Yeah. Like after, you know, 20 plus years, I still take them out because I want to remind myself of how awesome it is to hand somebody their keys. That's, that's right. Great. Whether it's a reload or whatever, right? Yep. 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 Okay. So at what point in your career, we kind of went 07, 08. At what point did you go, Shit, I got this. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> last week? No, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't heard her say that. Yeah, yet, Tom. yeah I'm but sorry. not quite that. Um, yes. I remember a couple years later, I finally became number one in our office, yeah. and it, that was one of my goals: was to be yeah. number one. And we beat out, or I beat out this lady that had been number one forever. Yes. And at the awards ceremony, she said, "You did a really great job, but you'll never do it again." Oh. And God love her. I yeah, just told yeah. the story the other day because yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if she was serious yeah. or if she was being nice, right? Mm -hmm. But I kind of think now she was being serious. Yes. But that was my catapult. So after that year, I tripled basically what I was doing. Yeah. And you're like, uh, I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. I'll buy five more houses. Yeah, yeah. Whatever exactly. it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah. You, do you, do you, you came home pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember at the summit when we talked about like I was like, okay, I synthesize. What do all these extraordinary people have in common? And the number one thing was Uber competitive. Yeah. yeah. Right? How important is that to you? Like to whether it's to be number one or to just be your best. And then what what advice would you give to someone that maybe just isn't as competitive? Maybe they've lost a couple of times and they took it personally. What advice do you have for those people? For me, I don't know if it's competitive, it's the no ceiling. Yeah. Right. And like I thrive and I feel like we build our business on no ceiling. Yeah. So when agents, what does that mean? I, yeah, I, when I agents hallucinate. Yeah. yeah. When agents come to me and say, hey, I'm not quite feeling this. Can I do this? It's like, yes, let me help yeah. you succeed with yeah. whatever you want to do. There is zero ceiling. Yes. And I, and I was in an industry beforehand that I just felt like I couldn't grow. Yeah. And I think that's like just not not a good thing for me. So yeah. I think it, that's part of my competitiveness mm -hmm. is that I want to be better every day. Where did that come from, though? Um. I don't know where that came from. I, I really don't. Were your, were your parents competitive? Did you play competitive sports? Did you win the spelling bee when you were four? Like, I feel like we're about to do an, uh, an Oprah podcast. So <laughs> go ahead. No, I just. Get I, out the tissue.